Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and welcome back to our third and final part of the flight in the PMDG 737 NGX from Amsterdam to Innsbruck. Now, I gotta correct a mistake. I have said in the previous two videos we're flying the ILS Lock DME approach. It's not ILS. There's no ILS involved in this. This is the Lock DME approach to runway 8 at Innsbruck. I just wanna clear that up. Now, as I have said in the other two videos, I just wanna throw it out there once again. This is PMDG's tutorial flight. When you buy the PMDG 737 NGX, it comes with two tutorial flights. This is the second one, and I have been using it to learn how to fly this aircraft, and you guys have been kind of following along because I've been recording everything I do. I can say with some certainty that after completing this flight, if you try it yourself, and this landing that we're about to do, there is not much that you can't do with that 737 from PMDG. It's the most comprehensive tutorial I've ever seen because this landing and approach is perhaps the single most challenging and dangerous approaches in the whole of Europe. I've actually flown this approach a number of times as a passenger, I think three times flying into Innsbruck, because Innsbruck serves most of the major ski resorts in Austria. So if you're going skiing, now think about this for a second, winter, ski weather, cloud, shitty winds, Right. If you're going skiing, you're flying this approach. Um, you're probably going to land on runway 26. If you're unlucky, you're going to land on runway 8. I've been unlucky three times. It is the single most terrifying landing I have ever been on as a passenger. It's an a terrifying, terrifying ordeal, and also one of the biggest rushes. Before we jump into the cockpit, I really want to talk you through the charts here. This is going to be a fairly lengthy video. I want to cover the whole approach and landing. So I'm sorry if you guys were looking for a 10 minute video. You should know by now the tutorial videos on this channel are not 10 minutes. Apologize for that. It's going to be very lengthy. Let's talk through this approach. We are going to turn up in the area. And this is the area. There's Innsbruck right there. We're going to turn up here at Rattenberg. And we are going to be, as you can see on the chart here, 9,500 feet above the ground. Kind of. Let's put that a different way. We're going to be 9,500 feet above sea level. We're actually only about 1,000 feet above the ground here. See these mountains? Those, my dear friends, are the Austrian Alps. And we're going to be skimming the tops of them as we start the approach. And then when we get into the approach, we're going to be pretty much flying right through the middle of them. This is the edge. Sorry, this is the, the ground underneath us. But you've got to bear in mind that right here, if you can think of this in 3D, right here on both sides is mountain. If you fly this as a passenger on a 737, you can look out the windows and you can't see sky anymore. You see rocks flying past the window. It's terrifying. So we're going to hit this at 9,500 feet. We are going to then turn uh, 210 degrees, as you can see on this chart, and we're going to fly that heading until we intercept an offset localizer, uh, offset localizer DME actually, called uh, OEV, which is right on the runway right here. There's the localizer beam right there. Once we hit that, we're going to turn and fly it like a glide slope to land. Okay, it's not a glide slope to land, it's an offset localizer, um, but it, it, we treat it pretty much like we're going to land. So it is a glide slope we have to follow, and you can see that glide slope right here. The DME part comes in in a number of phases of this flight. We're starting off at 9,500 uh, feet up, 16 miles out from OEV, we're descending to 8,561, at 14 miles out, 7,700, at 10 miles out, we are 6,000 feet above sea level, and so on and so on. So it's a, a pretty steep descent. Because it's a steep descent, I mean, you actually fly this descent, I think, at about 4 degrees, yeah, 3.8, 4 degrees down, <laughs> um, there is a risk of overspeed. So the entire approach is flown, flaps, and geared down. We're going to be flying at flaps 15. Most pilots would fly this. Oh, I got some email about my YouTube channel. Most pilots would fly this at 30 degrees flaps, but we're not carrying very much in the way of passengers, so we're flying at 15 degrees flaps. There's also a very unique wind condition because you're flying down a valley called the Fon um, that occurs on the downward side of mountains that basically pushes you around a lot. So again, you need to be very careful with your airspeed. Now, here's the tricky bit. If we were landing on runway 26, it would be fairly easy. We just follow this glide slope down, eventually turn and land. What could be more difficult? We're not doing that. We're flying the Lock DME Runway 8 approach, which is here. And yes, that's a mountain. That's a mountain. Mm. Somewhat challenging. Let me talk you through the rest of this then and show you how that works. Now, you remember in the last video, we covered the CDU and how to set up fixes on the CDU? There was a reason for that. <laughs> it turns out we're going to be using fixes and markers all over the navigation display to help us not make any mistakes because there is no room for error in this approach. Uh, what we're going to do, I uh, actually went a little bit too far. Let me zoom right in down here. We fly that 210 degree, sorry, we fly that intercept course, 254, down here until we reach the ABSAM NDB, which is right here. 
At that point, we are going to turn to a heading of 230 using heading select on the autopilot, which will take us directly to the Innsbruck NDB right here. Once we get to the Innsbruck NDB, notice we've got fixes now. There's a fix for Absam, there's going to be a fix for Innsbruck, there's going to be a fix for OEV. Once we get to the Innsbruck DM, um, NDB, we are going to turn right onto a heading of 264, which is the downwind leg to land at runway 8. And that is the next diagram down here. So there is, uh, I actually can't even see Ab um, Absam here, I'm not sure why. It's probably off the edge of the map, so I'm not even going to scroll around. Oh, there it is. What am I saying? There it is. There's Absam. So we hit that thing. We're going to turn 210 down here until we hit that one. Then we're going to turn 264, and we are now downwind. Notice at this point on this downwind leg, minimum altitude, absolute minimum altitude of 3,700 feet, which we will be reaching that minimum. You will have terrain warnings. Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up, going off in the cockpit all the time because at this point, as you can see, we are flying over a slope of another mountain. So it's higher here, lower here, we're flying that way, we're flying right along the sloping edge of that mountain at only about one, two, three hundred feet above the ground. It's crazy. Once we get to exactly 3.5 miles from OEV, here, on that 264 course, at this point, which seems like the worst point in the world to do it, but trust me, it's the right point, we will disable autopilot, auto throttle, VNAV, LNAV, and manually fly the rest of the, the approach. The rest of the approach is a very steep descending right-hand turn around here to line us up on runway 8. I suspect we will get it wrong, and we will end up about here, which means we'll need to come back and correct to land. It's very steep. It's very challenging. And I can tell you, some of the flights you do this, particularly when there's bad weather in the real world, my God, with full flaps, gear down, spoilers out, engines are screaming. That plane sounds like it's groaning in pain. It's, it's really not pleasant. But it's very quick. From about here to here is about one minute. It's crazy. It is the most intense minute of a pilot's life. So that's what we're going to be doing. And that's why we have fixes. Fixes for OEV, fix for Innsbruck, fix for Absam, and probably one or two other fixes as well. Let's get in the cockpit and try this out. Okay, here we are in the cockpit. We're about 40 miles out from top of descent. I'm going to be doing things a little earlier than normal because I really have to concentrate on talking through everything with you guys as well as actually doing it. Now the first thing we need to do is set up a speed restriction at 18 miles out from Oscar Echo Victor on the approach. We're going to be 15 degrees of flaps and gear down at that point, so we need to figure out what the uh, actual speed restriction needs to be and we can use the FMC and the CDU to do that for us. What we're going to do here is first of all calculate our weight at landing sorry, calculate our, our speed. We need to look at our weight at landing. So if I go to the uh, prog page right here our weight at landing is 8,400 kilograms uh, pounds. Our zero fuel weight is 122,600 pounds, which gives us a total weight of 131,000 pounds. So if we go to a net ref here, and we put in a total weight there of 131,000 pounds for the approach reference, um, it will recalculate all the speeds. So our speed with 15 degrees of flaps and gear down is uh, VREF sorry I'm reading my notes, it's VREF 40 plus 20 so it's this, 134 plus 20 so about 154, let's say 155 then it matches up to the notes that I'm looking at on the page right here so here's what we're going to do we go back over to the legs page we find that waypoint, OEV 18 and we're going to put in that speed restriction so 155 slash and we put it on the right hand side we now have a speed restriction at that waypoint which is exactly what we want we're going to hit the legs page to go back to the first page of our route okay with that all done we can start running through everything else now you're going to have to bear with me a little bit I am referring to a ton of notes I guess the first thing I really want to do is let's brief the, the first officer top of descent is right about here we need to be quick are you ready for the approach brief? okay Okay, we will be arriving by ATC vectors. We can expect an ILS approach. Landing runway condition is dry. Anti-ice is not required. Landing flap will be 30. Auto brake we will use level 2. Engine bleeds will be on. Decision height will be 200 zero, zero feet. Any questions? No questions. Approach brief complete. I actually set up that brief wrong. Landing flaps will actually be 40, so that might screw up efforts to crew a little bit. Not a problem. Let's run the descent checklist. We're about to start on this descent. Oh, he's going to run through his stuff first.
Now in a second when we start descending, the autopilot will drop us down at 3,000 feet per minute, which can be unnerving for the passenger. So we're going to override that and descend at 1,000 feet per minute until we intercept the uh, descent path and then let the autopilot take over at that point. It's a little bit better for the passengers that way. Descent checklist. Pressurization. Landing altitude. One, nine, five, zero. Feet recoil. Checked. Auto brake. Level two. Landing data. V ref. One, four, two. Minimums. Two, zero, zero. Feet approach briefing. Completed. Descent checklist complete. Now I heard some stuff there which was gonna get screwed up as well by our kind of off the wall descent. Not a problem. Okay, let's go ahead and do what we get. Let's set up everything to descend a little bit smoother than the autopilot's going to do it. So I'm going to use him to help me on this. Set altitude, 9,500. There he goes, rolling the altitude down. And what we're going to do is about five miles before the top of descent, here's top of descent rolling in right now, we're going to automatically, we're going to start a manual descent, basically, but without using the autopilot but manual. You know what I mean. It's not going to be completely flight pattern controlled. The way we do that is go down here, click on the desk page, you have a desk now Altitude, button. 9, 000, 500, if you seven. click that and then execute, it will start the descent early. Just gonna wait a little while here. Now my distance, ah, let's go back to the legs page here, hang on a second. All right, we're 15 miles, so we're gonna do it about in about 10 miles time, maybe, maybe a little bit earlier. Let's look at that route again. Yeah, we're actually gonna do it a little bit earlier than that. So when this is about seven or eight miles, we'll start the descent. Now I'm using track IR right now, obviously, because of the landing at Innsbruck is gonna be kind of tricky. I need to be able to look around. So somebody was asking me on the channel comments whether you can use Easy Dot Camera and Track IR. Absolutely, you know, that's Track IR right there. I still have my view set up, but it lets me do things like set a view up for these screens and then glance down with my head to look at the CDU and the FMC. Very close now. I could actually start it now, it's not a big deal. We'll just be descending slower than normal until we intercept that uh, normal descent path and then the autopilot will really take over. Let's do it now. So descend now, execute. Gonna move my physical throttles back so when we finally do get to Innsbruck, there's not a conflict between where my throttles are when we come out of autopilot. You can see the Austrian Alps in the distance there. Getting closer. Let me reset track IR a second. So excuse the bounciness if the camera starts bouncing. Okay, next thing we need to do is start setting everything up for this approach. So let's go to that init ref page on the CDU down here. We need to set in our landing weight, which is going to be 131, as we did earlier. We're going to set the uh, 40 flap speed there. That's all set now. We're going to go to the destination page now. We're going to go to the forecast page of destination and put in our transition level, which is flight level 1, 2, 0. Put that up the top right there. Now this is because Innsbruck's transition level is actually 11,000 feet. We're going to add 1,000 to that because of the terrain and everything else. Now we need to set our minimums up. Minimums are going to be 3,700 feet, which is from the charts that you saw on the introduction here. So I'm going to pop this open. It's going to take a little while to do this. Come on now. Ooh, that went horribly wrong. Let's wait a second. Wait a second, frugal. I was reading that completely wrong. So 3,700 feet minimums. That's again where I just heard the approach briefing went wrong. It was like minimums was 200. That's not the case. There's a huge amount to get done in a relatively short period of time. It looks like those mountains are a very long way away. They're not. We're landing in about 30 minutes. 
Now I've done this landing a couple of times now. It's gone pretty well. But if you see a cut at some point in what's coming up, then you know it didn't go too well and I had to cut it and redo it again. A little bit of behind the scenes tips there. Come on, now it takes forever to roll this up. 3,500, we want 3,700. There it is. Set. All right, let's start setting up the radios. We want to basically dial in the radios now to OEV, OEJ, and various things along there. So the, o the OEV localizer frequency, the OEJ localizer frequency, and also the uh, Rattenberg NDB. Gonna use FS to crew to do a lot of this stuff. It's a lot of clicking and typing. It's much easier if you get him to do it. So, if I can get this right. Set 110.10 on nav one. Set 109.70 on standby nav 1. Set, Set 109.70 on nav 2. Set, Set 111.10 on standby nav 2. So we basically have both of those uh, fixes on actives and on standbys, and we're all good. Now I need to set up the NDB here, which is gonna be 303. Whoops, I actually hate using this thing. 30. Uh, that went horribly wrong. And it's tricky for me to use because I have easy.com. We're not gonna make that active just yet. Let's set up the HGS. We want this to be in uh, VMC mode for our landing. VMC priority. We're good. I'm not going to bother setting up the runway link. We are all set. Let's go back up to the EFIS panel now. Need to do some stuff on here, like turn on these. That's all on. We need to put on terrain mode on the radar. We're all set there. Now we need to go down and program up a bunch of fixes as I indicated we would on the CDU. So here's the CDU. There's a bunch of these. Um, it's basically everything that you saw in that uh, intro I did to this. You can get it all from the charts if you go and look at the charts yourself. So AB is the first fix. We need to choose the right one. There's a lot of ABs in the database, so it's that top one for Innsbruck. And we want to be 230 degree radial from AB. Set. Let's go to the next page. Now we want the Innsbruck beacon. Uh, I, uh, let's put that in there. Again, Innsbruck, not Manchester. And 264 degree radial from there. Next page, OEV, Oscar, Echo, Victor. Make sure you're choosing the right one. Innsbruck once again. And we want to have a measurement which is 3.5 miles away from that for our turning point. Like so. Now, Oscar Echo Juliet is the next one. Again, make sure we choose the right one, which is actually the second one in this case. We want a 247 degree radial from this. And we want 065. There, reciprocal. Next page. So the Rattenberg one now, RTT. Come on now. There it is. We don't need anything special, we just want a marker. So we have the Absam AB NDB with a 230 degree radial. We have the Innsbruck NDB with a 264 degree radial. We got the OEV localizer with a three and a half nautical mile. Uh, ring, we have the OEJ localizer with a 247 degree and 65 degree radial, and we have the Rattenberg NDB. We are all set. Let's put this back onto the legs page. Okay, now we need to set up the courses on the MCP. Again, I'm going to use FS to crew for this. Getting very close now. Set course on my side 254.
Now obviously that's the course for the Oscar Echo Victor localizer. And we're going to set his one up at 067, which is the Oscar Echo Juliet localizer. Course 254. Set. set course on your side 067. So he's all set. We've already run the descent checklist. In the notes, the PMDG notes, the descent checklist comes right about now. We did that a little early. As I said, course I have a lot of things to worry zero, about. Six, seven, set. All right, now we just wait for 10,000 feet and the approach checklist. And then all hell breaks loose. <sighs> so now we can just actually kind of relax a little bit. We're looking for the Rattenberg RTT VOR. Obviously you can't see a damn thing right now. Let's fix that. What am I doing? I have track IR installed. Let's turn track IR back on. I turned it off there while I was doing all that stuff. So just roll this down a little bit. A little bit more. Now obviously the easy dot camera is moving the view around quite a lot. Even without weather on, it's quite bumpy right now. We are descending towards the mountains. Okay, so we got quite a way to go right now. Looking good. Now, as I covered in the introduction, we're going to hit the Rattenberg uh, NDB or Rattenberg fix at 9,700 feet and then start turning and running the whole approach. It's going to get very, very quick and rapid at that point. Uh, once I hit, or just before I hit OEV 18, 18 miles away from OEV, we're going to lower the MCP altitude to 3,700 feet, which is the absolute bare minimum because of the mountains and the mountainous terrain. That's normally the point at which things get out of sync between me and FS the crew. I hope that's not the case. Um, right, and then we're looking for the 6.3 DME from Absam, at which point we're going to turn to a heading of 230. And then once we get to the Innsbruck NDB at 3,700 feet, we are going to turn right onto 264, which is our downwind. It's very exciting. Just checking my notes here again, making sure they're not all screwed up. Which I think they are. We'll manage, we'll manage. <laughs> Cracking in the voice there. First time I did this, this view that's coming up right now, it's really quite terrifying. You're basically flying directly at the mountains. Which is pretty damn scary. So 18,000 feet, 18,500 feet now waiting for the 10,000 feet, or waiting for the transition altitude, which one we do the altimeters read back, then the 10,000 feet call. We're going to do the approach checklist, and uh, hopefully things go very, very well. Although my frame rate's gone through the floor because of fraps running, and a ton of other apps like my checklists, the voice recorder program, you won't have the problems I'm having. There's Tulsi right there. So here we go, there's the decel point. There's Tulsi. Drag is going to be required, yes we know, I'm not too worried about drag right now. Once we get to Rattenberg and we start really getting down, I will arm the spree brakes. At that point we can start putting in some drag. Oh, got a hiccups. Turning now to get us in a good position to turn back towards the Rattenberg NDV. See, it's all good this side of it. It's all scary that side of it. You know, if you look at the map right now on the ND, we're flying forwards pretty much, and then turning right. So the runway's over there somewhere, in the middle of all these mountains. So coming up on the transition altitude now of 12,000 feet. Very bumpy view. Our speed is transition level. Nice and high. And we're descending like a brick. Altimeters 1013. Altimeters 1013. You can see the holding pattern that we would be put into if we were put into a hold at this point. We're not using ATC, so that is not going to happen. Just 
waiting now for 10,000 feet, at which point we'll run the next checklist. Speed is coming down as it should. We are actually quite high on the speed. It needs to be 250 or less under 10,000 feet. So I'm going to help it out right now. And put track IR back on. Whoops. And we will on the speed brake. Ideally for the final part of this, we're going to be about 5 mile range. Currently we're at 10. on the NDB that we programmed in. There it is. Flight level 100. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be arriving at our destination. If you are making a connection with another flight, Please contact our cabin crew, prepare for landing. Meeting this flight, or watch the video monitors inside. Approach the checklist. For connecting a gate. Altimeters, one, zero, one, three. And then it will now walk through the cabin to secure it for landing. Set. We will collect and approach checklist complete. Newspapers and any other items you wish to discard or may not be taken off the aircraft. You are also requested to turn off all electronic devices. Stow these devices with your hand luggage. So now our next key is going to be right about here, OEV-18. That's where we're going to lower the altitude. You will see that we're passing over a very high lump of rock at that point. We need to be very careful on the timing of dialing in that next altitude change. I'm actually going to pop that view up now so I can keep my eyes up here. Thank you. Frame rate just went through the floor. Coming from the flaps settings now. Let's go first stage. Flaps one. Flaps one. Cabin crew, take your seats. There's the lump of rock that we need to be avoiding. Can't obviously descend right now. We're coming up on OEV 18 now. Set altitude 3,700. Altitude 3,700. Set. Flaps 5. Flaps 5. Now remember, Innsbruck is over here. It's down here and turn right. That you can see one of the flashing lights right now. We're actually going to go past it and turn back and come down, come around to runway eight. Just 
looking at my speed right there. Waiting for that to bleed off. I'm gonna arm the speed brake properly. Thank you. Flaps 15. Flaps 15. Gear down. Gear down. Set heading 230. Heading 230. Set. Okay, I had to do a cut there because my frame rates were quite literally killing me. I apologize for that. I had to reset some FSX settings. Let's just pop this open once again. We're about five miles away from AB, where we're going to start our turn towards the Innsbruck NDB, which is over there. Then we have to be very careful with the timing of the turn there to go this way, so we don't collide with this mountain, which is always a little bit risky. Just make sure that speed brake is still armed, which is not. Now it is. And I know I could have armed that a lot later on. I like to have it on now. Simple as that. Alright, coming up on AB now. Frame rate's looking good. Select, heading select. Heading select. Alright, now we need to turn before, slightly before the Innsbruck. NDB. And we'll be looking out the window at this point to see when is a good place to turn. If you get it too early, then you come out of the turn onto runway 8 too far to the right here. If you turn too late, you collide with this hill. Transition altitude. Altimeters 1013. Set. There's runway 26. Approaching minimums. Minimums. Coming up on Innsbruck now, two and a half miles. I'm going to be going right about there. Set heading 264. Caution, terrain. Heading 264, set. <coughs> Final approach fix. 3673 three feet. Landing checklist. Engine start switches. Continuous. Contin ah. Check. Speed brake. Armed. Landing gear. Down. Standing by for the flaps. Flaps 40. Flaps 40. Flaps 40, green light, landing tickets complete.
Right, we're waiting to intercept now this three and a half nautical mile circle around the NDB. That's where we're going to turn. And obviously the autopilot will be off. This will be a manual landing onto runway 8. thousand feet vertical speed oh more power more power terrain terrain pull up localized deviation obviously FS the crew gets a little concerned at this point they weren't expecting this by a long shot Visibility onto the runway is terrible. I'm in the wrong seat for that. And unfortunately, FS the crew doesn't give you readouts. There it is. I'm going to be off. Terrain, terrain, pull up. All right, I'm going to stop talking to you guys and focus on this landing. Check. Landing. Check. Okay, you clean up. Check. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, a little this bumpy. Is the conclusion of our flight. Please remain seated with your seat belts fastened. Never claim to be an expert on the 737 MGX. And the aircraft. Any landing you can walk away from, they say. This will be your indication. It's safe to move around the cabin. Oops, too much Gather your belongings and this. A little bit too much brakes, very unprofessional. Like thank you for flying with us today and we appreciate your business. We will hope to see you again on a future flight. And there's our turn. Thank you and goodbye. I'm not going to do the full shutdown. I'm going to go get myself a stiff drink right now. I hope you enjoyed that. It is a very challenging uh, approach. It's the Lock DME Runway 8 approach at Innsbruck. As you've seen, it's crazy hard. It was a bumpy landing. It wasn't in any way pretty. But we are down, and to be honest, I've experienced worse than a real aircraft at this airport, so I'm not too Thank upset by so that. Thank you for watching. As always, my name is Frugal. See you soon.